beautiful. Do you know what I really love about it? You've got the desert and the mountains on either side, and yet this house just enhances it and doesn't take away from it, and I think that's so wonderful. Preserving the natural beauty of these mountains was key to the design of this home. The owner's desire was to embrace rather than exploit this fragile landscape. Oh, it was just peaceful even I want to looking go. at that, I want wasn't to it? Go. You stayed the night in that one, didn't you? We Pierce? did. That was fantastic. <laughs> Morning, I mean, Pierce. Real pilgrimage to that place. I mean, we walked across the desert, this fragile ecosystem, let ourselves into this house that was made out of the earth from the desert, mm. and found ourselves in, in an amazing, extraordinary architectural environment that was really like no other I'd been to. Uh, they are extraordinary homes, and they're they all are. over the place. They are. Um, I do have. Is there a favourite at all for you? Do you think? Well, they're all favourites, but right. I think there were some really interesting experiences that I had as an architect. And I'm used to judging things very quickly from the outside and looking at them and making decisions about them. But actually, there was one in particular that I went to where you had to enter into an old barn built into the hillside and then go through a tunnel before you emerged into. Is that this one? This is, that's right, Villa right. Vals, this is, in uh, Switzerland. And you go into this old farm barn and then you go through this extraordinary underground tunnel that's made out of concrete, lit with chinks of light coming from above, before you emerge in the hillside looking at this extraordinary Swiss landscape. And sort of the theatre of it was something oh, mind look at, look at really. That. Imagine waking up to that every morning. Yeah. You'd never yeah. leave, would you? Of course. And there's a hot tub in that that Caroline and I then... Ended our, ended our time in that house in. It was fantastic. Um, what seems um, to be a theme, and it may not be in all of them, is that there's so much part of their environment. That's right. Do you think, is this the, the way we will build houses in the future? Or is it a change, do you think, that's going on? It's the way we used to build houses. I mean, we couldn't do anything other than just mm. look at the vernacular, look at how people built houses locally, look at what materials, what techniques mm. they used, but also look at how you can actually build in a landscape without destroying them. And what was great about all the houses we went to is, is that they were built in extraordinary locations, but actually the houses often made the locations better. They didn't make the locations worse. This yes. one's in a forest, I suppose, again. A, that one's in a, a forest. Really and, good indication of what you're talking about. And uh, there wasn't a single tree that was cut down here. So what they did was work out how they could weed leave a house in among the trees without disturbing the roots and so on. And you end up with a piece of architecture that is very responsive to where it is, very sensitive. I always watch these programmes, I'm blown away by people's yes. creativity and how you, you, know, you, you see a space and, you know, I, in my small brain, I just build a, you know, a block house and yet the design is just... It's really, it is really inspirational to look at it. It must be to walk around as well. It is, and really that's architecture. I mean, architecture is about making extraordinary things possible, and that's what you spend you know, nine years doing, is working out how to do something that is extraordinary, that is, in some cases, quite transformative in terms of the beauty and you know, the possibilities of, of what you're designing. Um, tell me about the 747 wings, because this is an extraordinary house. So the 747 house was really Californian. You know, we went up into the California mountains and there was this old art collector. Well, she wasn't old, but she was an art collector with a huge tradition of collecting interesting things. And she had employed a very Californian architect to make a house out of effectively salvaged consumer waste. But what he did was buy, or she bought on his behalf, an old 747. They then dismembered it, you know, hundreds of miles away brought the wings across the desert, carried by a helicopter, before they settled on the top of this extraordinary hillside looking at the Santa Monica Mountains. And it was extraordinary and mind-blowing, really. Mm. The other thing I like about this programme is the, the, the sort of dynamic between you and Caroline Quentin, because in some ways it shouldn't work, but it, exactly. but it does. Because it, yeah. it originally conceived as a single presenter programme. Yes, it was originally conceived as a single presenter programme. And then we thought, well, actually, that's quite boring. Architects telling people mm. about yes. houses is much less interesting than you show showing people what they're like to be in by talking about them with somebody else and travelling through landscape with somebody else, arriving with somebody else, mucking around with somebody else. And actually, we developed a really good friendship. So we went on holiday afterwards with, our, with my wife and her husband, and we sat in the front, they sat in the back, and we carried on doing exactly the same thing, <laughs> just talking about things, jumping out, and, you know, and it was great. Oh, that's so funny. And you seem to be given the keys to most of these houses. We were given the keys to all of them. I mean, a huge privilege to go and make pilgrimages to these places. Mm. And for me, it was a sort of mini sabbatical to see places I'd read about 
that and um, and what is because I mean, it's a curious relationship isn't it between the people who you know are paying essentially the money the homeowners and the architects and that's always an interesting relationship to see as well because how much is, is a sort of very symbiotic relationship isn't it very symbiotic and the architect's job is not just to take a simple brief and make what the architect mm. initially wants the architect's brief is to push people and try and find out try and give them what they'd never dreamed possible, but somehow in their psyche had thought they could have. Mm. And they are dream homes, aren't they? It, it's, they are. Look at these, you, you can't help but be a little envious, because none of these are done on a, on a small budget, are they? No, I mean, this one actually is quite a modest house. It's only 100 square metres, but it's on a rocky outcrop. 20 miles off the coast of Sweden in the archipelago. And it's a piece of landscape. I mean, you can walk over the building. You know, you can, you can inhabit it like you would a rocky outcrop by, by the sea, by the coast. It's a beautiful experience being in a building that isn't just a box with doors and windows like the one next door. How about the one you couldn't make a cup of tea? Well, that was it's interesting a big because problem for me. it was a really <laughs> extraordinary house in terms of its architectural ambition. It was like going into you know, an engine room of a NASA, you know, rocket. Yes. But actually, you know, the question is, how do you make a cup of tea? And of course, you can't just go and put a kettle on and fill it up. Mm -hmm. You have to learn how to make a cup of tea. And that was quite funny. You know, we couldn't make a cup of tea. So, yeah. <laughs> and can I ask you, what sort of people own these sorts of houses? Are they, are they business types? Are they just, you know, people who've got loads of... Well, they're interested Cash. in architecture. They're, they're, they're all people that are really interested in architecture. They're not doing them to show off. They're right. doing them to make mm -hmm. a lifetime's vision come true. They, they fall in love with a place. They often you know, have a memory of a place from their childhood. And they have spent 20 or 30 years, some of them, getting the money together to be able to do it. And then they'll build something that they'll have for the rest of their lives. And very few people will see it. So it's not about showing off. It's about doing something extraordinary for themselves, really. Yeah. Piers Taylor, uh, thank you very much. It's a great programme. Uh, the you. world's most extraordinary homes, and they are, is on BBC Two Friday evening, 9 o'clock.